Hi, I'm Joni Petrie and welcome to my YouTube channel. Well, today I want to talk about one of the most important things that you first initially will look at when you look at a chart that is so important. It gives you mountains of information when you just focus on this one initial thing and that is the chart ruler and the chart ruler whatever house it sits in will give you the information of what your focus is throughout your life. So before we get going with this, I want to remind everyone, if you would like my free newsletter where you get all of my predictions delivered to your email address, sign up on my website, which is galacticcenter.org. And while you're there, don't forget to look at my spiritual jewelry, which I have all of these symbols of our spiritual purpose here in life. And if you would like to study with me, Vedic astrology, become part of our university, go to my university website, which is universityofvedicastrology.com. So getting back to the chart ruler, what do I consider as the chart ruler? It is the planet that rules your ascendant, your rising sign, and the house that it sits in will be your focus. So I thought it would be very telling to go through all the ascendant rising signs as to what planet rules the ascendant and what it brings to you by seeing what house it sits in. So first time I look at a chart, I look at the ascendant. The ascendant sets up the whole chart. It is your first house. So what sign is on the ascendant? Well, if you have an Aries rising, Mars rules Aries. So Mars is your chart ruler. If you have a Taurus ascendant, Venus rules Taurus. So Venus is your chart ruler. If you have Gemini ascendant, then Mercury becomes your chart ruler. If you have a Cancer Ascendant, the Moon rules Cancer, so the Moon is your chart ruler. If you have Leo as your Ascendant, the Sun becomes your chart ruler. If you have a Virgo Ascendant, then that means that Mercury is your chart ruler. If you have Libra as your Ascendant, Venus is your chart ruler. So if you have Scorpio as your ascendant, remember we don't use the outer planets for house rulers. So Mars rules Scorpio and Mars is the chart ruler. If you have a Sagittarius ascendant, Jupiter is your chart ruler. Jupiter rules Sagittarius. If you have Capricorn as your ascendant, Saturn's your chart ruler. If you have Aquarius as your ascendant, Saturn becomes your chart ruler because Saturn is the old rulership, not Uranus. So one more, last but not least, Pisces. Jupiter rules Pisces, not Neptune. We use the old rulerships. So Jupiter is the chart ruler for Pisces Ascendant. Now let's talk about if your chart ruler is in the first house. Let's say you got a Taurus Ascendant and Venus sits in your first house. Your chart ruler is all indicative of you discovering who you really are in this lifetime. It becomes your essence, your sole purpose to really expand on self-discovery, self-knowledge, self-everything, maybe even self-consumed, but that's what you came here to do in this lifetime. And depending on the quality of the planet, such as Venus, that can be very charming, graceful, and beautiful. If you have an Aries ascendant and Mars sits in the first house, your chart ruler's in the first house. And that would also mean all the same things. It's all about self-discovery, what you've come here to discover about who you are in this lifetime. Very independent when the chart ruler sits in the first house. It's all about self-discovery and the initiation of your soul, your spirit, who you really are. Very important. So let's say you have your chart ruler. Let's say you have a Sagittarius ascendant and Jupiter is your chart ruler, and it sits in the second house. When your chart ruler is in the second house throughout your life, your focus will be about 
self-esteem and confidence because the second house deals with our value of who we are. But of course that focalizes into money. What you will be interested in throughout your life is how you make money because the second house rules that it rules money, finances, uh, how we make our living and money will be a major focus throughout life as well as finding your self esteem and confidence because when you have confidence, you're able to make money and you will. So let's say the ascendant ruler sits in the third house. That is giant in terms of you will always be focused on school, education, learning, reading, writing, everything to do about expanding your communications. You're big in communications. You may even be a writer. You may be a teacher. You may be a traveler because the third house is all about communications, traveling, not necessarily long distance, but always on the go. And the third house also has to deal with, with your going to school, getting educated, but all the things around how we learn, but how we communicate. Those are huge pressing issues on and off throughout your life. You will have a career probably in communications on some level. So let's say your chart ruler goes to the fourth house. This would mean you are homebody. You love your home. You would rather be home than anywhere else for the most part, even though of course you're going to have a life where you go out and experience and have lovely ex experiences throughout the world, but you got to return home. That's where you get your foundation, your grounding, and maybe you're close to your mother with the chart ruler in the fourth. And You'll be interested in real estate property. Maybe you even go into a business that has something to do with real estate or property, or you just luck out. And every time you purchase a home, you make money. You're lucky with real estate. So let's say your chart ruler goes to the fifth house. If this happens then everything to do with what the fifth house becomes a focus throughout your life. And actually I have this, my ascendant being Gemini, Mercury rules my ascendant and it sits in my fifth house and everything to do with the fifth house is definitely on and off what my life is about. So the fifth house deals with children. I have three sons and I am always in communication with them. Uh, every day, if I don't talk to one of them, I'm like, something's wrong but I always do. And so that's going to be a focus throughout my life. The fifth house is also the house of creativity. And I have to say, I used to be a studio art major. I was even in a ballet company at one point in my teens and everything to do with creativity was a part of my life. Even the fifth house has to do with, get this, astrology. It is called the house of the advisors to the kings in ancient times. Because what is the fifth house? Giving advice to others. And that is what astrologers do. It's also the house that deals with love, romance, and, and fun. I'll, I'll take those. <laughs> and it's also the house that can deal with stock market and uh, investing. And I just happened to luck into that with my first job that I was given enormous stock <laughs> with Southwest Airlines. And so that just played out. It wasn't even a focus, but it became a focus because it's in my chart. So the fifth house deals with all of those variables, giving advice to other people, children, can deal with stock market analysis and it's also the house of creativity and 
any form of the arts. So let's move to the sixth house. What if your chart ruler goes to the sixth house? Then the sixth house deals with work and health and healing. That will be a focus. And even the sixth house is, is considered the house of service. Uh, giving to others. And many times people with planets in the six can go into nursing, they're doctors, or they can even be in a service industry such as restaurants or flight attendants, those type of things. And it's also a house of work. And people that have their chart ruler in the six, they work, they love to work. It's fun to work. It's what they do. They put a focus around their work situation. And usually they're into some form of healing or health. They're very conscious of that. Also, the sixth house can deal with pets and animals and people with the ruler of the first and the sixth could deal with pets, animals, or anything to do with restaurants. They, they deal with service. Now, if the ruler of your first is in the seventh, this is very interesting. I find that these individuals are always putting themselves out for their partner. They want their partner to be content and happy and that's what they do. They do everything to make relationships work because it's their focus. Ruler of the first and the seventh, their partner. They put them first. They're always trying to make them comfortable and relationships are very, very important to them. So they're always seeking to be in a relationship or married. Okay. What if the ruler of your first is in the eighth? Now that's not easy. As a matter of fact, the minute I see that, I know this individual has not had an easy life. The eighth house is very difficult, but through many instances, maybe with humiliation or even disgrace or practically being bullied as a kid, those type of things. Guess what evolves out of that? Somebody that seeks deeper knowledge and information because the eighth house, although it can deal with some deep, dark, dark night of the soul type issues, what comes out of that is the search for something more meaningful. Life after death, psychology, people with planets in the eighth house are, house are fascinated with psychological analysis, psychology, astrology, metaphysics, all of these things, an interest in life after death. What happens when we pass on to the other side? That's all eighth house matters. So what if you have the ruler of the first in the ninth? Then this means your whole focus throughout life on and off will be about your spirituality, finding your truth. That's what the ninth house is about. And even possibly a connection to your father. But the ninth house also deals with higher education. So school, education, teaching becomes a major focus. And don't forget travel, traveling far and wide throughout your life because the ninth house is long distance travels. So all those things will be a major focus throughout your life. Let's say you have the ruler of the first and the 10th. Your career will be a focus. So throughout your life, you're always wondering, what is my purpose? What am I here to do? That's a 10th house matter. The career is always a focus. So what if, and also don't forget your social standing and reputation, always an issue for you. How do you look to the world? That's 10th house. Now let's say you have the ruler of your first and the 11th. You're always surrounded by people, unless maybe it's Saturn, because then you're very careful about who you bring into your life. But being in the 11th house, there is a focus around connecting to people, and even maybe being connected to your older sibling, but friends and organizations and groups become a major focus on and off throughout your life and finding those friends that you can trust and rely on. So what if you have the ruler of the first in the 12th house? What I find with this variable are people that need their time alone. Yes, they can be very private. 
They can be secretive, but they need their time alone. And they spend a lot of time alone because this is where they recharge, regenerate, refuel their body. Everything about that has to do with 12th house. And the 12th house deals with foreign lands and countries. So guess what? They have lots and many connections to foreigners and foreign countries with the ruler of the first in the 12th. And depending on if it is a benefic or a malefic, which benefics are actually Jupiter, Venus, or Mercury, or if it or if it's a malefic, Saturn, Mars, Rahu, K2, the sun, they have problems with sleep. And even the moon there means the mind is on overdrive and sometimes the sleep is hard, but they will have very prophetic dreams. And there's always, when there's planets in the 12th house, a healing of issues from the past. So with that, that covers all ascendants. And when you have the ruler of the first in a particular house, that house will be reminiscent of what you will be focused in on throughout your life. So with that, I'd like to close. If you would like more information on me or would like to study Vedic astrology, first you can go to my website. Don't forget to sign up for my free newsletter, which is galacticcenter.org. And if you would like to study with me, check out my university website, which is universityofvedicastrology.com. Thank you.